like to call the personnel committee meeting to order. Um, first on our agenda is privilege of the committee chair. Does anything, anyone have anything under discussion? Not at this time. So we'll start with the first resolution. Resolution amending the 2015 operating budget, workman's compensation. Um, we need a sponsor and a second. I'll sponsor. I need a second. Excellent. Thank you, Legislator Whites. Um, this resolution is amending $11,000 of the resolution we passed January 1st, $11,568, um, and that's for Safety National Excess Workers' Compensation. Um, are there any questions? Okay. Wishes of the committee? Go for it. <laughs> Move with the positive. Excellent. Next resolution is the resolution eliminating Deputy Commissioner of Highways, Deputy Commissioner of Buildings and Grounds, Office of the Legislature. Okay. Um, I left uh, a handout on everyone's desk, um, which kind of addresses all of the issues that were um, forwarded to this committee. Um, just to go over them briefly, um, the positions um, that were in the budget for this year, um, while they're funded by the Board of Legislators, I believe it's under the authority of the County Executive. So I don't believe it's our place and definitely not at this time. Um, it is my wishes of the committee um, to not approve this resolution um, and just to point out merit after the resolution it is the um, data that we did receive now the two positions in question um, one was in on the job for a month and one was on for two weeks so I think that these are um, this is a good good effort report given um, from the department, so I'm, I was real happy to see that, um, and I look forward to, to hearing as we go along um, from the chair of the physical services and the county executive. We had a wonderful meeting and discussion with both of them. Um, the candidates, um, just to address a couple of the other issues, so we put it to bed. Um, the candidates. Um, selected and not meet the job. They did. I did also put the job specs in there. Um, if anyone has any clarification that they would need, I can follow up with that after the meeting. Um, the ethics um, issue was addressed when we were formulating the ethics policy. And that was, um, there was a large committee um, and it was discussed at length. Um, so I feel 100% confident this, this, that this issue, issue was addressed. Um, and lastly, um, the impact that this would have um, to hire outside firms, um, the duties of both deputies um, would never be to um, do certain jobs that could be presupposed by this body and just to reiterate back to number one um, it is not our job to say what positions do that's the county executive um, but if as as the two branches I think this year um, we're going to clearly more define what our roles are and I think we will end up working very well together in our own duties and our own branches. So if there are any questions, yes. Just like to say two things. Um, yes. One I want to point out that specifically one of the things our charter is clear on um, is under the powers and duties of the executive uh, 302 subsection B is to exercise supervision and control over all administrative departments, offices, and agency of the county and prescribe internal organization of such departments, offices, and agencies. <clears throat> so it's something that's clearly designated to the county executive.
executive and not in our authority. Um, also, I'd just like to say that I, I think um, it was really great last week getting the report of uh, the engineering department, highway uh, and bridges and buildings and grounds. And I know that's a first for us. Uh, and I, I would assume that there's some correlation there between these two deputies and now having that, uh, that division within DPW and the reporting thereof. So I think it's, um, you know, being a month and a half in, uh, it seems to be that we're, we're getting results and we have, we have results right in front of us of what, what those are. It's something that's tangible. Um, that's all I'd like to add. Not to confuse these reports from are inter intervening with the employees. I think that that's definitely the authority of the executive. Um, and ours as the, the stewards in the purse. So I, um, okay, I think we've explored all that. Um, is there anything under other? I would, I don't want to move it forward. I would like it to die. So I, if, uh, I, I don't support it coming out of committee. Well, I would pull my sponsorship. Thank you very much, Legislator yep. Beniak. I appreciate that. Okay, so it's dead. Okay, motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. I second.
resolution is authorizing county executive to sign a stipulation and settlement of agreement Kimberly L. Patterson versus Montgomery County. Montgomery County Sanitation District number one and the village of Nelson. Barbara's the sponsor and uh, the second. Roy, uh, any discussion? I have one here. I say it's a copy, but it's, it really does. We don't really know what the settlement is for, and we don't really know what we be uh, what we're voting on here. Uh, I know that the clerk has copies of the uh, of the proposed uh, stipulation. But is there is there a dollar amount in this stipulation? Can you show that? are the 
the other uh, two defendants, those being the sanitary district, which again falls under the county and uh, the village of Nellison. Um, and I try to be evasive, but if you, if you want to follow that up with something else, I'd be happy to try to sure. answer it. I'm giving up my copy, but yeah, you can have there it. There is no, there is no amount there, is there? Yes, there is. It's uh, section, but I just found it. I just got the section easy. Okay. So I'm gonna need a little more help here. This this settlement. No, I don't have it. Okay. This is this is the um, this is the county defendants shall pay. What does that mean by county defendants? I mean, there's the three entities that you're talking about. Uh, what does that mean? The county is going to pay that. That money? means the county. And what about the other entities? They don't pay any money. According to this, no. But I did not prepare this, and uh, I wasn't privy to those negotiations, such as they were. In the reading of the document, though, that's that's the way it's written. Uh, we do have two sanitation members here. Uh, does any do any of you two want to speak on this? Or, uh, or, well, do to answer your question. Uh, originally was on our fund balance, we had used uh, a portion of it uh, for a siphon project uh, going on, which is money that we'll get back. Uh, currently we have around $70,000 that will go towards us, the rest will come from the county on an interim basis. Then once we are reimbursed, the, the money will shift back. Uh, the, uh, the issue, as uh, Doug alluded to, uh, was one of uh, the pumping stations there there was a question on who owned the land, and uh, that's what started the whole thing. Uh, as Doug mentioned here, back years ago, there was no uh, supposedly clear definition of who had it. Uh, so this settlement uh, resolves that uh, for the sewer district and uh, the, the other defendants, making it clear uh, that we have it, and also there was additional land purchase as part of that settlement, which is on the riverfront in the, on the Nelson side of the bridge. So the county gets reimbursed at the time it goes on, or, or just if we can get the second one back. The way that the agreement it's going to be a 50 50 the sewer district. itself and the sanitary district as an entity itself. That's the 
between the county and the sanitary district, I expect, because that language, that, that is not clarified within this document. Right. That's my problem. Doctor, do you, do you know who did write, write this document? I, I know who represented the county okay. in, in doing it. Who actually wrote the document, I think, was probably a collaborative effort among the plaintiff's attorney and the attorney hired to represent the county in the sanitary district. representation 
as far as the legal fees? Oh, yes. Absolutely. And this, therefore, would follow under the same arrangement, would it not? Because it is part of... That was for legal fees. This, this would... It could be this end up being the same, but it wouldn't necessarily... That is the intention of the sewer district, is that they are on the hook for half of the settlement. I, if I may, I, I don't know that it would necessarily logically follow that a settlement would be divided in the same fraction as was initially set up as as for the payment of the legal fees, simply uh, based upon at the time that was done, there would have been no discovery or motions having taken place in the case which, which could have uh, uh, revealed information that would tilt the scales in one direction or the other away from the 50-50. And I'm not saying that happened, but... Mr. Chairman, I, I just I just want to add a couple of things. Uh, the first is that the executive session would be of no value to me because I would not attend it. Okay. Second, the, the, an item like this where, where uh, legal counsel is, is perhaps at, advising that we, that we enter into this agreement or that enter into this settlement, um, should be here to explain it to us. And I think it's disrespectful uh, to each uh, the legislators here to just assume that, that we would that we would just come and rubber stamp this and, and, and vote it along, whether it's over a time issue or any other reason. And so it's unacceptable to me. I'd like to move to uh, move the resolution to full board with a negative recommendation due to the lack of information. I have a second. We all in favor of any discussion? It goes just to clarify. I'm sorry, can I clarify a question? If we move it forward with this, we have time and can um, correct this possibly with more information by the full board? Of course, any amendments can be made at the regular meeting, but. Uh, then I'll go along with that. Are, are you re requesting more information on this? Absolutely. Okay. All right. With the stipulation of more and information. How about possible counsel to speak? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Definitely. I mean, to be frank, if, if there is no more information, I would not be supporting it next week. Um, however, this would allow us to get that information and have counsel present at next week's regular board meeting. Okay. You got that down? All right. I would just like to add one thing. Um, from the old guard, there is nothing I would like more than to <clears throat> put this to rest. This has been something that has um, cost the county in many ways in the sewer district. I think that this is something we need to get behind us, but I do agree with both um, what Legislator White and Legislator Jesse said. So, thank you for your time. So, with that, we'll move it to full board with a negative recommendation. Is that the wishes of the committee? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Um, under other, if I could take a moment of your time, I, I spoke to some of you, uh, and once I didn't, I apologize, but this is concerning um, uh, hiring a independent financial advisor, uh, Daryl Turkin. Um, most of you know him. Uh, he, he has worked on the trust. And unfortunately, I don't have anybody here from the trust to speak on that. Um, but at the beginning of this year, I talked to some of you about exactly what you would like out of our budget and finance. Uh, there was some, there were some of you that wanted a monthly fi financial report. Uh, there's some of you that possibly would like to cut down on the amount of transfers. So, in, in taking all that information, I thought about reaching out to Daryl and, and bringing him on the team, so to speak, the financial team. And, and this would only 
would be, we would pay as we go, meaning if we had something, a project for him to work on or to help us with, we could ask for his, for his advice, uh, whether it's revenue research, uh, you know, looking at each department, their budget, you know, with the way things are changing with the budgets. So he would actually be part of our our financial team. So um, I'll open it up to a discussion from the floor. Um, just a couple things that I'd like to add. Uh, one, you know, if we were to go out for financial consulting for the budget or anything else, uh, I would really hope that it would be analyzed um, in full and not on a per diem basis, so that we could with our procurement policy and also I would like to hope that we would go out for RFP. I know there's a number of legislators that have been concerned about not following our procurement policy with the RFP process but also not following policy and procedures in general. Um, and I think if we are going to go out for financial consulting, we should follow our own advice and follow the proper procedures, go through RFP. Um, and additionally, go through the proper um, resolution request process and meet that 10 day. We've been very firm with uh, the executive and the other employees of the county that we need resolutions before a committee meeting 10 days prior to uh, with the proper information. And I hope that we would follow that as well moving forward. That's all. Anyone else?
budget as a whole, I think that's something that we would be within our uh, within our powers and duties to move forward with in conducting an investigation and audit of the county budget as a whole. Um, but as far as preparing a budget that, um, or preparing an alternative budget and, and by itself, that is something that would not fall 